What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today a very exciting video for you guys. Samsung is gearing up to release Samsung One UI 5.0 for the stable channel, which means all of you guys are gonna start getting it. The uh, Samsung Developer Conference is actually going to be coming up this week, and so I'm making this video so I can release it when they do launch Samsung One UI 5.0 beta in stable. We're gonna be talking about the biggest features that are user-facing features that you're gonna enjoy on your new software. Now, before I get into that, I do wanna remind you guys that if you are planning to pre-order a Galaxy S23 Ultra coming up in January slash February, whenever Samsung decides to release it, that's going to run One UI 5.0 for sure, we know that. And uh, I'm doing my mystery boxes where I give you guys a free case, a free stand. It's actually gonna be one of these very cool stands from my friends at Lamical. This is the light blue version, you can see there. It's a travel stand to use your phone and your desktop. Um, you also get a cleaning kit, some other cool randomly stuff inserted, 100% free. I cover the shipping. All you gotta do is choose the size, S23, S23 Plus, uh, S22, that's supposed to say S23 Plus. I'll have to change that later. Uh, and then you can add that to your cart and check out. It's 100% free for you guys. So I'll drop that in the description and the pinned comment. Let's go ahead and get started and talk about these features. I've got a list here just to keep me on track. The first one, which is the biggest feature I think for a lot of people is a new way to customize your wallpaper on the lock screen. If you go to your lock screen in One UI 5.0, you'll be able to long press on the lock screen like this, put in your fingerprint or your pattern, and then it's going to give you this new and improved wallpaper picker. Now this has actually been a part of Lockstar in the Good Lock module for quite a while, but it's a brand new way to edit your lock screen. You can go ahead and get your wallpapers. They show up by featured. You can also see the wallpapers you've downloaded from the Galaxy Theme Store there. It's got a really nice organized layout. You can also customize how your notifications show up, your clock style from here, your shortcuts, anything that you want to appear on the lock screen like your contact info and then your other shortcut here on the other side. It's really just incorporating some of the things from Good Lock and Lockstar into stock One UI 5, which is something I really wanted to see with One UI 5. So I'm glad that Samsung listened and they started incorporating more Good Lock stuff so that more people can enjoy it and not just the specific regions where Good Lock is available. So that's the first thing. The next thing is stackable widgets. Now I've made full videos on all of these various features. So if you wanna do a deep dive into one particular feature, like the lock screen widgets uh, or the stackable widgets I'm gonna talk about now, I'll link all the videos in the description because during the course of the beta, I did make individual videos. So if you go over here, I have a couple of stackable widgets. Basically, this is how they work. You pick out a couple of widgets that you want to stack together, and then you can swipe between them by just swiping over like this. So here I have two Google Photos widgets, and uh, these two Google Photos widgets, one for my son, it's an album of all the pictures of my son, one with all the photos of my wife, and then I put those there so I can kind of flip through them throughout the day. I also have one below here that has my current packages that are coming along with timers in case I set any app timers. These are just widgets that just have two. You can stack more, stack as many as you want. Um, it's very convenient. You just take two widgets and you drag them on top of each other. So pick any widgets you want, like, you know, long press on your home screen and choose your widgets however you want. Drag one widget, drag another widget on top of it, um, and then you'll get a stackable widget, which you can then swipe through and enjoy. So it's very fun, very cool, and a nice way. It's actually made me want to use widgets more because I always feel like I want too many widgets. I don't want to clutter up my home screen, uh, although I usually use the secondary home screen um, to this side by swiping over this way. And now it's not as cluttered because instead of having four, I basically have two and I can swipe between them. I really like the stackable widgets feature that Samsung has enabled. Uh, the next thing is improved multitasking. And let me actually talk about this. There's a couple of key things here. The first thing that's key with the improved multitasking is that Samsung has now made it so that when you go into your recent apps, what you can do is you can actually take an app and drag it to either the top or the bottom, and it's gonna take you into split screen view. Or you can drag it in the middle and it's gonna open it in pop-up view, as you guys saw right there. Now, of course, you've always been able to do that by just tapping on it and you can open it wherever you want, split screen or pop-up. But being able to do this by dragging and dropping is really a nice, fantastic feature. Now, once you're in an application, like say Twitter, you can now use new gestures, which are available in Samsung Labs, swipe down from the corner to take this into pop-up view like that right there. Or you can also, if you want to go into split screen view, you can do two fingers, although this can sometimes be a little finicky if you have Samsung Pay enabled, two finger swipe from the bottom 
to take you into multi-window view and uh, get the split screen view as well. So a couple of new gestures. I really use the one swiping down from the top corner to get pop-up view a lot. That's my particular favorite. Again, you know, gestures is gonna be what's natural for you. The two finger one, I find a little bit finicky and, and it's not one that I use as much, but the pop-up one I use all the time. As you guys see now, I'm using Google Keep in pop-up mode. So lots of cool stuff that you can do now uh, in multitasking. They've added some functionality, also made it so you can drag and drop either split screen or pop-up view. The next thing is Bixby Text Call. And this one may not be a big deal right now in the US. We don't know yet if it's going to roll out uh, in the US fully, but if you go into the phone app, let me do this actually behind the camera so I don't put anyone's number on blast. If you go in the phone app and you go into settings, then you'll notice there's this new option right below caller ID and spam protection called Bixby Text Call. Now what this does is it's kind of like Google's call screen feature on the Pixel. It'll answer the phone for you and Bixby will basically, you know, answer it, ask why people are calling, all that kind of stuff. And it's only available right now in Korean. So you can tap on text response, uh, responses as you're seeing the transcription of the call and ask for additional information, you know, say whatever you want to the caller and Bixby will read it. But right now it's only in Korean. I actually did a full demo of this in a video last week. So if you want to check it out, you certainly can. It's kind of funny playing with spam people and having them answer the phone in Korean. But hopefully this is gonna come to English because this is a wildly useful feature that I use all the time on my Pixel device and I'd love to have it on my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. The next thing is the intelligent Wi-Fi menu. So if you actually go into the Wi-Fi menu, let's go in here to connections, what you'll find inside the Wi-Fi menu, so if you go to Wi-Fi, up here you'll see intelligent Wi-Fi in the three dots menu. Now this lets you do all kinds of cool stuff like switch to mobile data whenever your Wi-Fi connection is bad. It lets you look at Wi-Fi power saving, turn on Wi-Fi. You can see the auto hotspot connection. Uh, you can detect suspicious networks, show network quality info. There's a lot of good stuff in here and uh, kind of to help you manage your Wi-Fi in a really good way. Um, this also has, if you tap on here, you can turn on developer options. You guys saw how I tapped that over and over again. If you go into the menu, now when you go into intelligent Wi-Fi, you'll see Wi-Fi developer options and you can get some cool stuff like connection information, nearby Wi-Fi information, lots of stuff about signal strength, and really dig deep into your Wi-Fi if you're someone who's a power user who's interested in those kind of statistics. This is a cool thing, especially for us who are phone nerds. We love you know, knowing what's going on, troubleshooting your connection and things like that. Okay, so up next, we've got connected devices. So there's a new menu inside settings that's been slightly reorganized. It's right here under connections, it's called connected devices. And this gives you a nice layout of like things that you can quick share, uh, your buds, like if you have your Galaxy Buds, how they auto switch, call and text on other devices, like if you have a, a Windows device or a Chromebook, link to Windows, Samsung Dex mode, Smart View, Smart Things and Android Auto. So it's like all of your connected devices, you know, like headphones, watches, if you have one, all those things in one place and also your connections to like desktop mode if you use a PC or if you use Samsung DeX, all that stuff appears here. It's just a nice more organized way and I really do like the menus and the layouts and what Samsung has done with this to make it easier to use. The next thing is the improved color palette. So if you long press and go into wallpaper and style on the home screen, you'll see here under color palette, you now have extended options and you can also choose basic colors which will allow you just to choose color pairs now instead of just a single color. And you can do this with a little bit more precision than you could before. You also get more color palettes per wallpaper. You can actually get up to 16. It just depends on what wallpaper you have. Uh, my wallpaper is a little monochrome here because it's mostly purple and blue and a little bit of white and gray. So I'm only getting eight options here as you can see, but you can get up to 16. And if you have a multicolored wallpaper, you can do that. Also, if you don't have an icon pack, which I'm using an icon pack right now, but if you don't have an icon pack, it'll also apply the palette to your app icons as well. I know people always get upset because I use my icon pack, but there's also a few new stock Samsung icons for those of you who care about those kind of things in One UI 5.0. I'm sure a lot of other people will show them off. I personally love my icon pack that I'm using now. Uh, the last thing is kind of a bonus one. I didn't know about this until recently, but apparently, 
There is a version of Over the Horizon, which is Samsung's, you know, classic ringtone uh, that's performed by a member of BTS, uh, the Korean pop group. So if you go into Sounds and Vibration, you go into Ringtone, you can go right here. It says Samsung brand sound Over the Horizon by Sugar of BTS. I probably pronounced it wrong, so someone who's a BTS fan can let me know. But anyway, let me turn on the sound really quick. And so if you go in here, this is the this is the traditional. This is the traditional one. They actually play this before all the unpacked events. This is the BTS version. So, you know, if you're a BTS fan, I guess that could be kind of cool. And it's something else I found while I was kind of digging around in the settings. Anyway, those are the main changes. There's also some changes to notifications, the way they look, a couple of other permissions. I'll probably do a deeper dive once Stable is released and make more videos. But I just wanted to give a roundup for those of you who are going to be getting One UI 5.0 for the first time. Talk about some of those biggest features that you're going to use on a daily basis. And maybe I'll even make a video with the stock icons to make people happy on the next one. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon. Check out the Galaxy S23 Ultra Mystery Boxes. Again, they're 100% free if you guys are interested in pre-ordering one of those. Um, and if you guys want to check that out, the link will be in the description in the pinned comment. Appreciate you guys checking out this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.